Some Warframes can pour out a lot of damage with just their abilities, turning whole rooms into one giant kill box. I'm going to show you 5 Warframes and builds you should have in your arsenal if you want to become a walking explosion. I'm the Engineer, let's solve the practical problem. This video is sponsored by Aleka Frame, a powerful companion app for Warframe on PC. It helps you easily manage your inventory, improves the Relic Reward screen, tracks missing gear and components, and helps you set up sales for your spare loot through Warframe Market. Download Aleka Frame for free with the link in the video description. When it comes to nuke frames, some take more setup or investment than others. Let's start with a very simple to use nuke with a Mirage build. Mirage can make use of the Augment Explosive Legerdemain for her second ability. On cast, she turns all nearby pickups into proximity mines, dealing damage in a large area around each triggered mine. This only requires one ability on Mirage, cast every few seconds, to continuously deliver wave after wave of damage to enemies. Because this ability uses enemy drops to turn into bombs, it works best when there's a lot of enemies, which will be running through or spawning on the loot of their dead allies. Both Sanctuary Onslaught and Star Chart Defense missions are great for this. With a high range, high strength build, you'll be using a not insignificant amount of energy to keep this build running. To support that, I suggest using Xenerix Wellspring, Arcane Energize, or Emergence Dissipate. You especially need to be careful as this nuke consumes nearby energy orbs on top of other loot drops. As the damage of this nuke can't really scale, it is somewhat limited to the Star Chart and both Normal and Elite Sanctuary Onslaught. The upside of lower levels means that the only defense you'll need for this build will be Rolling Guard. For this build, if you want to skip the one former on Mirage Prime, you can drop Power Drift. For normal Mirage, she'll need at least two former. For a Warframe who needs even less setup to get started, you can use a classic Ember Inferno nuke. Ember's fourth ability cools down meteors with impact and heat damage, applying a burn to surviving enemies. While Ember technically needs line of sight to hit enemies, She's got some flexibility in that role, which improves her overall application. The energy cost is on a per enemy basis, up to a cap, making Ember more forgiving as a nuke when used on smaller enemy numbers. By building for high strength, range and efficiency, with a low duration, you can continuously apply a lot of casts to a large area. Ember's damage is also connected to her Immolation ability, dealing even more damage as the heat bar builds, while also gaining significant damage resistance. Just don't leave the bar full for too long if you like having energy. When you're against highly armoured enemies, Ember can also use Fire Blast to armor strip an area to allow Inferno to deal maximum damage. Make sure you charge up Immolation to a full bar, showing 90%, for a total armor strip in line of sight. Now despite the efficiency on this build, Ember is still spending at least 4 energy per enemy on top of casting other abilities. To keep her running, the Exothermic Augment provides additional energy orbs from enemies killed by Inferno, while Equilibrium will allow Ember to heal off energy orbs and restore energy from health orbs. If you combine this with a companion with Synth Fiber equipped, you'll get even easier energy generation. Now this whole build requires 3 former on Ember Prime, although you can get away with just one former if you drop Power Drift, at a small cost of your strength. This build's low duration does mean that most Helminth options are not particularly helpful. What you can do is subsume on Hideous Resistance over Fireball to grant more status immunity for those moments when Rolling Guard is on cooldown. Be aware though, this build is not suitable for Elite Sanctuary Onslaught, as Simaris blocks you from spamming Ember's 4th ability. Most other missions should be just fine however. For our third Warframe, another very simple nuker, we've got Vault. When built with high range, high strength, and at least neutral if not positive duration, he can deal an incredible amount of damage in a wide area by using his 4th ability, Discharge. This is very effective where enemies are packed in, like on Defense or Sanctuary Onslaught missions. The downside to this build is the efficiency, making Vault energy hungry. You can get around this by using Energize, Wellspring and Dissipate in most missions. For Elite Sanctuary Onslaught however, Vault can also make very good use of the Preparation mod. It only needs to be at rank 8 for full effectiveness, and this will give Vault max energy at the start of each round of the mission. With Prime Flow equipped, this equates to at least 6 casts of Discharge without you having to pick up a single bit of energy. When using this build in Elite Sanctuary Onslaught, make sure you let the ability fully run its duration before recasting, otherwise Samaris may lock out Discharge for 15 seconds after the duration ends. 
Now while Volt can use his electric shield ability for defense whilst nuking, the more energy efficient option and overall more effective approach is to use the Augment Capacitance. This will grant you shields and overshields to all allies based on the damage you're dealing with discharge. Seeing as Volt's damage is adding up to a nuke, that's a lot of shields. If you don't want or need to use that Augment, such as if you have a friend using a support Warframe, then instead equip Augur Secrets for more strength and a small amount of shield gating on top for some safety. Now if you would like something a little bit more involved, you can look to Equinox. Not only has she got the highest potential nuke damage in the game, able to hit the damage cap if you really want to, she also has a broad set of skills to go alongside the nuking option. Equinox's fourth ability, Maim, is the key to her nuke. While the ability itself only does token damage, the aura it projects will charge up based on a proportion of hit points lost by enemies in the zone, which is then added to the pool on their death. On recasting Maim, Equinox releases that stored damage on every enemy in the aura, with the damage reducing over distance. In essence, you turn on the aura in a safe-ish place and use your weapons to kill some enemies, especially the beefier ones. Once you're charged up, get yourself into the middle of a large group of enemies and watch the minimap clear itself as you release. Now there's no fixed charge value you should be building up to before releasing, as it does depend on the enemy types and the level you're playing at. So just pay attention to how much charge you have and how effective it is when you release to learn to get a feel for the right time to nuke. As the damage absorbed isn't affected by strength, Equinox only requires range and efficiency on the base build. For the additional slots we have spare then, we can take Equinox in a few different directions. By building back in some strength, Equinox can make use of the Augment Energy Transfer. With this, Equinox can activate her fourth ability in Night Form, gaining shields on enemy kills. If things get particularly rough, Equinox can even turn on Pacify to reduce incoming damage. When you're ready to nuke, Energy Transfer allows Equinox to switch to Day Form without losing the accumulated Aura Charge. This means instead of using that charge just to heal your team, she can unleash the damage built up against enemies. Alternatively, Equinox can use the strength for the subsumed ability Fire Blast, using Vitality for a health buffer on this otherwise squishy Warframe. Fire Blast will provide a substantial armor strip to allow the nuke part of MAME to deliver substantially more damage to the Grenier especially. Now you can only get up to 75% armor strip on Fire Blast, which requires 100% ability strength. You can achieve this with Dayform's Provoke ability, giving you that last little strength buff to get you back above 100%. Even then, a single cast will strip a significant amount of armor, and with the update coming shortly, two casts will wipe out all armor for the enemies hit by it. If instead you feel like going the duration approach, this would allow Dispensary to be subsumed onto Equinox. By using Equilibrium in place of Streamline, you'll be able to scoop up far more energy and also healing as needed without having to switch form. By no longer building for strength, your extra slot can instead be used to get that last little bit of extra range with Cunning Drift. Finally then, I couldn't cover nukes without talking about Sarin, bringing three of the four Horsemen of the Apocalypse in one Warframe. As with all nuke setups, she wants high range, this time with good but not excessive strength and a positive duration. Building Sarin this way means we have reduced efficiency, so having the ability to recover a lot of energy, such as with Emergence Dissipate or Arcane Energize, is crucial to keeping her going. Now unlike Vault, Ember and Equinox, Sarin does not have a defensive ability strong enough to make up for her squishiness. Instead, Brief Respite allows her to tank through shield gating, especially when combined with a decaying Dragon Key. On top of this, Rolling Guard provides on-demand immunity without needing energy, while Prime Sure-Footed ensures Sarin won't get knocked down by a surprise enemy. You can skip some aspects of this if you want, but it requires you to focus more on avoiding the more deadly situations. To use this build is relatively simple. Activate her first ability, Spores, on any enemy of choice, and then cast her fourth ability, Miasma. With that primed, you can kill the infected enemy, and this will spread her plague around the entire room, quickly building up some damage. Repeat casting her fourth ability periodically to continue this plague. If you have energy to spare, you can add on her third ability, Toxic Lash, to allow you to spread the spores more consistently with your weapon attacks. When using this build for Saren in Elite Sanctuary Onslaught, I find it helpful to watch the mission timer to know when you can recast Miasma without annoying Samaris. Aim to recast it at most every 10 seconds so you don't get locked out of the ability. So with that, you've got the means to rain down meteors, unleash lightning, spread plagues, deploy bombs, 
or simply sneeze your way to a nuclear style victory. Grab your favourite and see just how much you can get up to. Thanks again to Alaka Frame for sponsoring this video, and as always, deploy nukes, get kills, and fight well, Tenno.